Good evening folks and welcome to Alien Addict. Now what you're about to watch is uh, not really an interview but more of a discussion on just people in the UFO field that are in the field of aliens, this, that and the other. Um, it's an open discussion between me and Musty Audio. I'm on his podcast, he's on Alien Addict. Go check his podcast out, it's in the description. Um, and guys, whoever is sharing the stuff on Reddit or wherever you're sharing it, I want to know in the comments because it's it's great. I mean, I'm hearing my stuff, or I'm seeing that my stuff is being shared on Reddit the most over anything else. Um, and I need to sort my Reddit account out um, so I can check you guys out. But anyway, it means a lot. Uh, check out the links in the description. My Patreon is in the description as well if you want to support the channel further. That means a lot. And yeah, just keep keep going, guys. Because at this point, you know, you could make me an absolute millionaire, you know, so I can get my own little alien house that's shaped like a UFO that Scott C. Waring can then go on Google Earth and actually make a video about it saying that it's a real UFO. So, yeah. Keep them thumbs up and stay subscribed. Don't unsubscribe. Stay subscribed. And, uh, yeah, just share me out so I get more subscribers. Because the more subscribers I get, the more powerful I get. The more powerful I get, the m I'll just bring disclosure down on you like a rain of fire. Yeah, the, uh, the, yeah like I said, I'm doing the reverse Rogan because I started a podcast. I'm now starting to do stand-up comedy. And the next moves I need to do is to learn jujitsu and get jacked, and then I might shave my head. Yeah, I, I think I think the shaved head look is it's in in interviewing. No, not it's, for my head. It's not. <laughs> I don't know if it is for that. You see, people say that look, my mates have always said you're receding. I'm not actually receding. It, this is like I've this, got a high. No, it's fine. Yeah. I've got a high hairline as well. Yeah. It's got. It's called a widow's peak. <laughs> apparently, I mean, it runs in my family. Yeah. So I've I, I've been receding since the age of like, I don't know when I started growing hair. I like the, the idea. The idea is sat there with, with like a pipe and slippers at four. But um, <laughs> yeah, I, I I I had the same thing. My mate that went bald, he used to tell me all the time I was going bald. I'm, like, I'm not going bald. I love I love hair long after you're dead, mate. See, see, my mate's gone. Well, he's gone bald. Um, he probably won't like me saying this, but he doesn't watch my YouTube videos, so it's fine. Uh, but he's he's gone bald, um, and uh, he's had a uh, you know like a permanent wig that he he gets it changed yeah. every now and again. I know and someone happens. that's had one of those put on as well. It looks amazing. Well, this one looks hilarious. Oh uh, no! This guy, honestly, his hair looks—it's fucking fantastic. Oh yeah, I, I know. I know you can get some of them that look brilliant. This guy looks like it, it, it looks like someone's used a spirit level on his fringe. Yeah, it's but, so but, incredibly but straight. It's got to get changed, like you know, like uh, well, you do Formula One, don't you? It's a bit <laughs> like going into the pits and you get your your tire changed every so often. You know, he has to get his hair changed. Um, but um, it's um, it, it just made, made made me wonder, you know, in the whole. And me and my mates were discussing this a little bit behind his back, but I will say it to his face. And if you're watching this, my friend, uh, I do love you uh, very much, and you've got great <laughs> hair. Uh, it's not real, but it's great. Um, so people have got I, like I fake wonder, boobs that look great. <laughs> well, I just wondered through lockdown, you know, what happened when he because he must have needed the change. Yeah. You know, and people were couldn't get into the dentist. So I don't know if you could get in for your hair to be kind of like it's changed. not essential, not essential. Uh, Lee, this is an alien channel, by the way, we, and we're talking about wigs. I know. And hairlines. <laughs> Anything happens here. How um, have your interviews been going lately? Good, mate. Well, we've just been saying the interview that you interviewed with me, and I put that little clip of um, where we were discussing Bob Lazar. Um, Jeremy Corbell, um, he he uh, he messaged me. He asked for my number, and Jeremy, if you're watching this, I have given you my number. You still not rang me. 
Uh, <laughs> he, he, he said, he, you know, he kind of hinted that it would give me some inside information. Mm. And I could ask anything I wanted. Come on, Jezza. Come Get on. Out. Get it sorted out. <laughs> uh, but yeah, no, that was crazy. It's been going well, mate. It's been going well. Um, I'm getting many interesting people on. Um, I'm delving a little bit into the paranormal. Because the more and more I've researched UFOs and aliens, the more I kind of find myself coming back to the paranormal for some reason. Recently. The, more you, the more you're starting to think maybe they're not aliens. Maybe not. <laughs> <laughs> I think uh, yeah, I, I think they're aliens. I do think they're aliens because they've, they've got, you know, they've got little fucking spaceships. They've got something. I don't, I, you know, I, I don't think um, spirits. Why would a spirit need a spaceship? Mm-hmm. Or maybe it's not a spaceship. Maybe it's just like a fucking some energy, an energy vessel. Um, I uh, I haven't spoke to you since the. Um, the I, I can't remember who it was. It was some. Was it someone in the U.S. government that said that they had like a wreckage or off-world a craft? Off, off-world craft. Off-world vehicles, actually. To uh, be how isn't precise? That still, the biggest story because it got recalled. Ever broke. Did it? What happens? Well, the the New York Times basically just said oh, it was all a fucking mistake. They didn't say it was a weather balloon, but basically they've just thrown the story out of the, out and said, you know, they've got the wires crossed. So how do you how do you take that then? Do you think it's inventive reporting or do you think that it's um, someone said, right, enough now? You've tested the waters enough. Yeah. We've got a reaction. It's not quite the reaction that we're after. Hold your horses. Possibly, yeah. mm-hmm. possibly either that, or it's just somebody got a little bit excited. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. The office yeah. probably doesn't work there anymore. That's crazy though. It's it's, it's crazy that, that that sort of thing will slip out. But then, like, I, I mean, I'd heard nothing about retra- the retraction. But this is the thing about retractions, isn't it? Um, journalists can say whatever they want, and then it gets retracted. But nobody, nobody knows it's been retracted. You know, because yeah. is it is it something like if you take um, like the the number of, that will re- that read the initial article, it's like twenty percent of that number sees the retraction or some something ridiculous like yeah. that. Yeah, yeah. I do you know something. I mean, anything that goes out now, they they could tell me that they're here, and I I would not believe it until I was licking an alien's face. <laughs> I'm so happy you said face. <laughs> Lee, do me a fav- favor. Cause I, well, I, I, this is on Lee's podcast as well, guys. But uh, can you move slightly to your right? Because when I record this on a Skype recording, there was one interview that I don't know if you re- if you remember. That, yeah, j- just slightly more to the left. That was the left. My right. That, oh, you're right. This is a slight bit. Oh over. yeah, no, I ended up. Uh, I ended, ended up off up screen, face. didn't I? Yeah. yeah. So you need to go back the other way. <laughs> this is exciting. That's perfect. Perfect. <laughs> yeah. It's okay. People are um, are used to this quality content from my podcast. <laughs> um, yeah, it's 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 a regular a regular occurrence occurrence for occasion. No occurrence nonsense to happen on my podcast oh mate that's the same with alien addict he, you know he's, he's you've got to the nonsense is the fun i think so yeah yeah although, otherwise then people take things too seriously yeah you know especially in this subject of ufology um you know paranormal world whatever i think there needs to be a little bit of uh bit of fun yeah, I, I think I think so. I think if there was, I think there'd probably be more progress made of the whole thing because people would stop uh, arguing with each other all the time. They would, they would. So yeah, we was we was we were saying about the 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 Bob Lazar um, discussion with just a little clip of me. I think we only spoke about Bob Lazar that one little bit. 
and it did pr- it did pretty well that video. Yeah, uh, it's I, and, I was happy. Uh, I was happy we not we were nice. Yeah, but, <laughs> yeah. No, I was happy that we were nice. But <laughs> about that, I kind of uh, there's a, there was a few there's a few people that piped up on the video and said, you know, don't trust Bob. You know, it's all one big mm. fucking lie. You know, the guy's a hoax. The guy the guy has pulled the pulled the wool over everybody's eyes. But I, I just don't see it. I don't see it. I, I don't. And I know we're repeating ourselves, but yeah, yeah, kind yeah. of just I just want to put in place because people always ask me, "Do you believe Bob Lazar's story?" I have no reason not to. Yeah, uh, I'm. I believe it. For, I, I I believe it for that reason because like, because like I've got no reason not to believe it. Um, I don't think the as much as there's holes like in the in the story um i don't think those holes can be filled in with the debunk the the debunking of it um and he seems truthful and and there is a bit of me that wants to believe it as well you know he he does but then again you've got people like um and i do i I love um what's his name west is it mick west yes yeah great debunker fantastic Mm -hmm. But I kind of th- think he's got. <sighs> he's a he's a good one to talk about. Actually, I've got I've got thoughts about Mick West at the minute. Yeah, yeah. You know, with the whole Fravor, David yeah. Fravor. He where sounds like crazy. a conspiracy theorist. He sounds like a crazy conspiracy theorist. Well, he's basically saying he's kind of saying that Fravor doesn't know what he saw. But the guy's got, I, I don't know, was it, so is it something ridiculous like 25 years fly experience? Yeah, and it, and it's... That's probably wrong, but it's, something, it's, it's a lot. It's not just him, is it, though? Because it's him, but it, it wasn't him that, uh, it, he saw it, it wasn't him that was tracking it. That was a, a separate aircraft, wasn't it, that tracked it and got, and got the film. Um, so, there, so instantly there, you've got two separate pilots i think there was four altogether wasn't there? not to mention the guy that was tracking it on the radar back yeah. at the ship and it, but and west's like come up with this crazy thought was what is it like he thinks it's a bird that's colder than the ocean was that was that what his thing was it was a cold bird that, that so, you could see i can't remember what his theory was on it to be honest I'm with sure you sure it's something like that but there was one where it was an it was um an actual uh, a, it was um, a jet with one of its engines out, and when you see it tilt like that, that's that's the different sight in that. But that was somebody else that debunked that one and said that it was an engine out. But I think these pilots are going to fucking know. Yeah, of course they will. Because I, I mean, the thing is, that's it's it's okay to say, oh well, it could be this, and you go, well, that's great, you say that. But the the difference between you saying it might be that or a pilot saying it's definitely not that is because the pilots when they're they're fl- it's life and death situations for them that's what they're trained for yeah you know, it's, they're, they're trained that if they're not going to misidentify something because if they misidentify something before they know it that's going to engage them yeah i mean that's it i mean my dad was in the merchant navy and it'd be like my dad say it's me saying to my dad when he's telling me about a ship out at sea that that he knows what it is. Yeah, it's not a ship, it's a duck. <laughs> and I say, Dad, no, that's that's not a ship. And he goes, no, trust me, son, it's a ship. Because he knows what he knows about distances. He knows yeah. how big things are. He, you know, they they've just got that kind of it's instinct. Well, it's not instinct. What is it? It's just it's experience. Yeah, that's what it is. And and it, your brain just gets trained to what distances are. I mean, a bit like a snooker player. You know, you know where to hit that ball exactly because you because you know the distance. Mm-hmm. And I know that's only a pool table or a snooker table. It's a bad example, this I know, but no, no, it's a good it's a good example because it's 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 being being a specialist in something. Mm. You know what I mean? Like like a professional video editor will look at um, a piece of film and go, "That's 120 frames a second, or that's 25 frames a second. Whereas idiot like me goes, oh, no, no, it's "Moving pictures," but. Um, you know, I don't, I, I don't understand how he can, he can be so absolute, and that's what, that's what gets me with him is, is this absoluteness about it, and 
I, if I'm if perfectly honest, I think he's he's like he's discrediting his own work the way he's reacting. I mean, the it's I I've always found it di- interesting, and I thought, you know what? As soon as the Pentagon said yes, these are UFOs, mm-hmm. some of the debunkers are going to start backtracking a little bit. Yeah, he's not he's not back. Uh, God bless him. He uh, Mick, Mick West is not backtracking on this. Do you he, think he? Do you think it's him because he was, um, he got such exposure from being on Rogan, and it's there's the connection there, isn't there, between because he he's been a guest on Rogan, uh, he um he's been brought up on Rogan's podcast when he's been speaking to like Corbell and uh, yeah. Fravor, and um, I I think that's for him to back down now, I think he would feel he he feels he'd look stupid, and. That's not a good play. If, if Possibly, you're, yeah. Possibly. But if, but if you're following the path of like logic and truth and stuff like that, then you um, you can't be worried about looking stupid. You shouldn't think that you look stupid. You should just think, right, I look wrong. That's you know, that's that's science, isn't it? You know, it's you can't you can't be right all the time. You're gonna have theories, and then someone else is gonna have a theory that makes your theory wrong. Yeah, I'm, don't get me wrong. I like the guy. He once commented it on one of my videos back mm-hmm. when I had about two hundred subscribers, and it was a debunk video. And I didn't even know who Mick West was at the time, yeah. and he just like commented saying that's a brilliant debunk, something, something, something. I can't remember. Oh, nice. And then I thought, oh, is this? Good? But you know, when I don't know how often you check on YouTube, but you can kind of look at your subscribers, and it shows subscribers with subscribers themselves. Mm-hmm. And I thought. Oh, and then I thought, oh wow, he's got a lot of subscribers. So yeah, I don't know if he's a subscriber anymore, but he was there for he was there, and yeah, um, yeah he, he he commented on one of my videos, and I was like, really, I thought, what a cool guy. You yeah, know? yeah, he's he seems like a great great a, a great bloke. He's a, he always he comes across as like genuine in what he does, but I just think he's he's lost. He's lost yeah. his way a bit with this. I, I, I just, I want to ask it. I'd love to get him on. I actually, I messaged him on one of his uh, YouTube videos, but it's probably gone to his spam because it normally does. If somebody kind of makes, if someone tells you they're a channel and they want to get you on or whatever, it automatically goes to your spam because I get stuff in my spam all, to, all the time from other channels that I don't want it to go to my spam, but YouTube just puts it into the spam. Yeah. Either that, he's just ignoring me. But I asked him to come. I asked him to come on because I would like to ask. Uh, make the question do you actually believe that we have ever been visit- visited by an extraterrestrial do you believe that there are is something out there i think he would say no first that, thing that, yeah. yeah you're probably right you're probably right but uh see that I, but i find that weird about anybody um because there's such good film of not all you know the like mo- most videos you see of ufos are the, the really good ones aren't real. And then the others are just like little blobs in the sky. But still, those blobs are there. So what are the blobs? You know, the... Yeah. Uh, Who was... What was that interview you sent me the other day with Fravor and the young chap? Uh, Lex... Um, Luther. <laughs> yeah, Lex Luther. Lex F- Fieldman? I, yes, I, I think that's it. Anyway, yeah, yeah. So the Russian guy. He was actually asked about... Uh, Mick West mm-hmm. in that interview and I think Fravor was quite I expected him to say like something like how dare he you know I'm a fucking pilot <laughs> I've been doing this for, for, for years I know what I I'm saying I think he was tactful he was very tactful yeah I was like ooh because if that was my dad he'd be like who's this guy to tell me what I, that I don't know what I saw yeah 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 he, he could have railed on him a bit there but I think if he'd have done that he'd have um He'd have looked. He'd have looked like what I think Mick West looks like. Is did you see the video he did with um, explaining the trying to ex, explain the rotation of the of the uh, yes. engine when you were talking? Where he he had the pop the the ball in his pool. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Now that was really well done, though. To be fair, it, it was, was really well done. But I couldn't help thinking, like, this is a crazy man with a football in his swimming pool shouting at a camera. Yeah, I wonder what his neighbours for. <laughs> The, <laughs> mix mix at it again. Yeah, it's like it's it, for me looking at that. That was up there 
with a guy stood in his garden with a hose pointed at a football going, water doesn't sp- stick to a spinning ball. It was the same level of um, craziness. And you just think, well, you maybe, maybe you need to sit down, have a cup of tea, maybe, maybe sleep on this for a while, and then move on to something else. <laughs> Lee, I've got another prediction. It's another Joe Rogan prediction. What's, what's going to happen? Fravor and Nick West on together. Mick West. I keep calling him Nick. Ooh, I've watched Imagine that. that. Yeah, it'd be good. I would definitely watch that. Um, I Do you think... It, there's a little bit of me wonders, though, whether this is it. Has all the excitement gone? Because everyone... It seems that can, like that. Yeah. Everyone that can talk about this has spoken. So unless... Um, the, the To the Stars thing, all, you, all, all I constantly hear from people like what like Fravor said oh there's some really cool stuff coming from to the stars at the minute and you go all right well where is it because we've been here there's been cool stuff come from to the stars now for a long time and all we've got is a um, weekly history channel tv show which is the same as every other history channel tv show yeah let's just say you and me got together we got given a load of money by history channel and it was like like hunting for dinosaurs, and we were off. We were off into the Amazon to find a real dinosaur, and we found we found a raptor. So we bag our raptor, we take it back to uh, uh, back to headquarters, and we finish filming the show. Do you think we would end up waiting for the end of the show, or would that raptor be shown to people before we'd wrapped filming? <laughs> I love that example. Yeah, you, you, you'd show the raptor, wouldn't you? You'd be like, would. fucking raptor. Yeah, this is going to be a four-part. got it. Yeah, instead of eight, eight episodes, it's now four episodes. Here's Dave. Yeah, so, you, so you know, what you're saying is you know nothing. There is no big grand finale yeah. to this show. And that's it's one of the reasons. I've, I've, I've always been so interested in, in all of these as, uh, aspects of uh, uf- ufology or uh, in, into the paranormal. But I think there's a certain, I think it was when I was maybe in my early 30s it hit me, where I just thought there's never a resolution. It You're just constant. It's like watching Coronation Street. It never ends. There will be people in the States watching this that don't know what Coronation Street is. Okay. Um, Actually, no, for, the, the, I think everybody knows what Coronation Street is. A never-ending TV program. <laughs> yes, a never-ending story. Yeah. Um, oh. <laughs> I was going to sing the fucking never-ending story then, but I've just forgotten the song. Um, you've just got me stuck now on uh, velociraptors and hunting them, and how much of a good TV show that would that would make if uh, if we pitched that to the History Channel. But just looking for dinosaurs with with Lee and Ollie. Yeah, it's a great idea. Dinosaur um, addict. Yeah, we'd uh, we we could get. We'll, we'll see dinosaurs. Just get like we would get like a gimp to go around <laughs> with us as well. Yeah, because because we he, we could just use him as bait because we wouldn't want to get ourselves in any real danger, would we? Well, I mean, you'd need more than PVC to protect him if there was a real velociraptor. Yeah, well, I, I don't mind if anything happens to him. That That's is a gimp, by the way, isn't it? That is a gimp that wears the. Yeah, I, I mean, I just meant general dog's body, but yeah, we can oh, okay. PVC if you want. <laughs> yeah, love <laughs> a bit of PVC, mate. <laughs> but I mean, what well, I thought to like a month ago to two months ago, I thought, wow, we are we're going to get something here, and we're going to get something before the end of the year, and I I just don't know if that's the case anymore. I did, and we are we already spoke about this that we won't use the word for anything that's gone on this year yeah. in 2020. But I'm not sure what words we can use on YouTube. No, I, I have no idea. But for for the for the for the crisis that's happened and uh, the um, strangeness and everything about it and all the rules, this, that, and the other, and then I I saw that they have off-world vehicles. When they announced that, I thought, this is it. This is going to be the next thing. And I thought, you know what? If they release something 
and tell me that there are aliens and they are visiting this earth, this, that and the other, and something's going to happen, I thought, I'm not going to believe it. Mm. Because the t- it's just too much this year. Tell me another year, I might believe it. Don't tell me this year. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. No, no, I get, I, I get it. Um, I, I see, I had this discussion with somebody else on my podcast when we were talking about that. Excuse me. <coughs> and um, when I was saying to her, I can't make my mind up whether the um, the the like the uh, the announced UFO video was put out as um, deflection away from everything that was going on in the world at the time, or whether everything that was going on in the world at the time was deflection for them just to slip that out. I can't I can't make up my mind what it was because if it was if it was something to get people talking about something else then it didn't work. Yeah, it was it was, just, it was just strange how it just kind of like we've got something we it's we're going to you're going to hear from it. It, it they were about to announce it in the next article and then no we made a mis- we made a mistake. Yeah. Bullshit. It's I don't I don't quite get it. The, um... the, the the thing is, and this is what I keep hearing, is that uh, the Pentagon have more footage. TTSA have some, they've got something that they're going to release next. And apparently it's going to be like, it's not going to be like gimbal footage. It's not going to be like, you know, the the heat vision, whatever they call it. it it's going to be proper video evidence that's going to actually show something. Now, whether that's going to be the fleet that they talk about, I don't know. But this is people keep saying this to me, that this is going to be the next thing. So I don't know if this is just like uh, Chinese whispers. <laughs> I'm, um, I, I'm, I'm, I'm through with Chinese surprises. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, you know, is there going to be that? Hard hit. What? What would if we see it? Because we know the technology that we have these days. Yeah. If we see something that is hard hitting evidence, and it, the Pentagon says this is it, you know, this is an unidentified flying object. We have no idea what it is, but there's nothing that can do these maneuvers, and it is in full color. It is in HD, or even 720p, whatever. Four twenty. I'll team take four twenty. Um, do we believe it? Uh, I think you'll find a s- switcheroo in the perception of these things where the the people that didn't believe or weren't interested, you know, you're for, um, for, like, for good or bad, your general people that go to work every day, they come home, they watch Strictly Come Dance and they watch bake off of whatever countries they're of origin they're in um never think about i think the u.s version is the great um u.s fry off <laughs> is that real no i just made it up it should right. be um, yeah um i think you'll find those people that just they never give these things a moment's thought will all of a sudden be completely on board and go wow wow this is real this is a thing that's happening whereas all the guys that were looking for ufos and researching it will go no it's fake i don't believe it i think you'll find a complete switch around and there'll be two reasons for that one reason will be that um the people that didn't believe in it before will be being told by someone that they trust you know it's whether it be a government entity or a, a leader or something like that. You know, it will be someone, even if they don't trust them, it'll be someone in a position of power that's told them something. Um, th- conspiracy theorists have a natural, um, a natural sort of pull away from like establishment and politics. So you, 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 there's a natural distrust for government organizations and stuff like that. But more than anything, it, what happens? What what happens to all these people? What happens to um, like Nick Pope? And apart from the, he might get a slew of um, television interviews when it happens, you know. But then as soon as it's out, none of these people have got a home. What's the point in 
Um, the, oh yeah, we we fucked. <laughs> yeah, the, oh. yeah. So I think there'll be a about? Oh, there'll be a well, pullback. There's aliens. Okay, yeah. What do they fucking eat? Yeah. <laughs> you know, I'm, you know, you'll get somebody say, say if there was aliens. Yeah. And they came down. You know, they 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 shook Trump's hand. You know, they started shopping in shopping malls. This, that, and the other. Tiny there hand. would be. You'd start to see YouTubers saying crazy things. Mm. And blaming them for things, blaming them for diseases, blaming them for... You've seen that film District 9, haven't you? Yeah. You know, where they put them all into that camp. This is you so know? weird. Like, li- if like, I was literally. aliens, would I... If I was an alien, if I was not Like, if I was a being from outside of this planet, would I come here? Would I fuck? Yeah. Because <laughs> so human maybe beings are fucking nine. evil, crazy yeah. bastards. I mean, are we? Uh, the, I think. The, the, I think that. Yeah, I think that the high up powers are. Um, I think that. Yeah, the worst aspects of um, uh, of of human society. There is. There's, there's certainly that aspect of it. But I think that the the vast majority of things. I mean, uh, you, you will only have to look at the words. We're not allowed to say like the the three letter organization or the. Um, like what's going on? What's going on in government at the moment? Um, there are conflicting powers that are working whichever games they want to play themselves in order to disrupt like civilization and the way we are now and the way people communicate with each other. But the majority of people, like you, like you, like me, like our next door neighbours, we just kind of want to get along with each other. Even if you don't, even if you dislike someone, it's like it's we we all know those people that when we see them walk towards us, they go, "Oh, God." But then, but then, if they say, "Oh, hi," you're gonna go, "Hi, okay," and then you're gonna go about your business. The the majority of us don't want to fall out with each other. So I think if anything did come and see us, it, and especially if if let's say for instance that all these little things in the sky have been we've been being observed for ages. Um, I think the conclusion would be human beings are nice, but they're run by psychopaths. Yeah. Definitely. The whole world, you know, well, not the whole world, but the the majority of the, the power mm. is definitely psychopaths. You know? I, I, well, is that thing, I, isn't it? I think some, you... some countries may need a psychopath to run the country because it gives, you know, it's that, they need that selfish element. Yeah, well, I, I think there's a there's a there's an argument to be had that you can't be successful without having that characteristic. Yeah, yes, no, I totally agree with that. I totally agree with that. But I think right now we 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 need we need somebody to come in that just has fucking passion for human for humanity. That's what we need. Um, I think it should be me. I think yeah, I should be the, the I, UK for you. Prime Minister. Yeah, why not? It's it, 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 it can barely spell my own name, but you know, it's. <laughs> <laughs> I've I haven't seen Bojo ever write his own name down, so who knows? <laughs> so, we we spoke about Bob. We spoke about Fravor. You know, have you ever looked into Travis Walton and thought this guy's lying through his teeth? And the whole crew were lying through the teeth. Are you be- a big believer in the Walton case? Um, I, I I know the Walton case. Uh, I'm indifferent, Walton neutral, I'd put myself in. Um, there's a little bit of me. Uh, he went missing. And I, I, oddly enough, I've just watched both the films um, of Missing 411. Yeah, you know, the um, the documentaries of the the, um, the guys wrote about eight books, hasn't he, uh, on people gone missing in in American national forests. Yeah, um, what's his name now? I forgot his name. Uh, oh, I mean, we what do, do you? We do this all the time, don't we? I'll just put it up. I'll Was it a week? Yeah, I'd like to see his head. I'd like to see his head pop in from the side. I'll, I'll, I'll put I'll put I'll put his head over your head. Uh, <laughs> um, but. Was it a week? Was he gone for a week? Travis, I think, well, yeah. I think it was. No, I don't think it was quite a week. I should fucking know this, but, you know, stuff goes but in was, one year days. and I'll with me. 
it was days, wasn't it? Days yeah, he went. it was days. We've gone for days. Um, I mean, the, the one of the cases in the, uh, I think it's in the first book, uh, uh, Missing 411, was a child that, I, she, the, I think it was a little girl, like four or five, and the child t- turned up, it, it disappeared, like massive search, obviously, um, distraught parents. It was in, in a national park, and I believe it turned up like hundreds of miles on the other side of this park, completely naked. Oh, in about, I, I think it was four days there, but he, he, it would have took like, anybody like six or seven, ten days, you know, to get where they where where the child ended up. Um, you know, not not to mention the fact. You how know, old, how old is this child now? Do you know? I I don't know. No. Um, because it would be interesting to see. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. You know, an interview of yeah. You know what happened? What what's your memory of that? Um, but you just think the all of these people that go missing in national in national forests. There has to be something that happens to them. Um, I don't. You know, I, I don't know if you put it all down to aliens and st- or abductions and stuff, but. Maybe there's lots of stuff that we've because of because we've got the um, like the big theories like the the Bigfoot theories and the UFO theories. Maybe we're like ignoring like time slips and stuff like that, you know. And well, like like rips in time. Yeah, yeah. A few people have said that to me that you know that this is it's kind of like it's what it is and the actual the alien aspect of it is they found they they know a way to kind of slip in between dimensions Mm -hmm. but if you can slip in between dimensions can you do the same with time um i know there was one in new york wasn't there i think i mentioned this on this podcast before i was on your youtube channel my podcast um there was a guy that was hit by a car in new york that was found like he was he was hit and killed in the middle of the street this was um like 1950s say 1940s something like that um and he he had unknown uh unknown money in his pockets and a passport with un, an unknown country name written on it wow no oh, i don't know if we've discussed that and i don't know that case yeah yeah it's 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 pretty wild i mean that, essentially that's what it is it was reported in the newspaper i, I believe I, of, of the time but yeah, he had. Well, he, this is the 1950s, and so so. Uh, it may, it, maybe did he die? Earlier. Yes. Yeah. So he got run over. He had money that nobody knew what it was, and he had a passport. Yeah. A country that doesn't exist. And then there was there was another one as well where somebody was brought in where uh, they they were ranting and raving about somewhere that that didn't exist, and I believe they just disappeared, like just like gone. Oh what. This is just a reminder. What was that case? Did you hear about the case? This is like I think this is when before, this is like hundreds, hundred and over a hundred years ago, something like that, with that little boy and little girl that had a green tinge to the skin. Yes. Yeah. Like, yeah. What the what the kids called? They called yeah. them something. I um I can't remember. It was in England as well, wasn't it? It was British. Yeah. Yeah. No, I can't remember what they were, but yeah. Uh, I know they were they, Greek little bastards, but I, I haven't. You know, but nobody knew. And they couldn't speak, or they did they speak in a different language or something like that? They spoke to themselves apparently in, in like a unfathomable language, but uh, they ended up speaking English because they they um, they stayed, didn't they? And it, I, I like the story said that the longer they stayed, was the more the green tinge disappeared off their skin. Right, so they're not green. In, they were in the end, they weren't green. Yeah, they weren't green, and then they, that was it. It we it, get like loads of stuff like this like the black-eyed kids that freaks me out that you know the black-eyed kid stories the kids with the black eyes yeah and the have you heard about the uh star 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 children no what's that i've I've heard the term star children before but i don't know what star child that's like the the kids with the i think it's the kids with the like little the little alien heads 
I probably opened up a can of, can of worms there. Someone's going to say, no, you're wrong, Alien. But I think that's what it is. Star Child, I'm sure it's like they've, they've got the skulls of this. Oh, yes. Yeah, yeah. No, I've seen that, like the, um, there was a documentary. Or was was that part of um, Greer's thing? No, that's the um, Anakan, Anakana. The little, the little dude. Probably pronouncing that wrong, yeah. The little, it was a little girl that, uh, we spoke about that actually before, yeah, 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 yeah. because that was the the um, the doctor Gary Nolan was working with Stephen Greer. That's, that, people are thinking now, Alien, I think you're repeating yourself because I've said this so many times on my show. Uh, but yeah, the doctor Gary Nolan was working with Stephen Greer, who's researching that uh, um, little thing, um, and. Uh, he said that you know the DNA was, it was strange, yeah, it was definitely strange yeah. DNA, and the it looked like a seven year old apparently. How, how old the actual um, feet? I'm saying fetus, but it is a fe- yeah, they said it's a fetus now, but the child of oh, person, so like action figure person. size, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah, they said they said you know he said that the DNA was. N- it looked like it wasn't anything human. Um, but then he started to work with TTSA to the Stars Academy. And then they they released, oh, it is just a fetus. Which was a bit weird how Greer was working with Gary Nolan mm. through the actual uh, documentary Serious Disclosure. And... Then Gary goes to TTSA. If there is anybody at all in the UFO community that I don't trust, it's Stephen Greer. Is that because of how big his hands are? Um, a little bit of everything is about how big his shoulders are and how small his head is. <laughs> well, I think Greer, I always speak about this. Bless him, Greer. I do love you. Um, he, he likes the sound of his own voice. Just very much so. But so do a lot of people that talk on YouTube and yeah. podcasts. Absolutely. Why do you want to do it? <laughs> um, um, the but, thing I have with Greer is is the fact that when I it took me uh, uh, it it took me I don't know maybe. It was a long. It was a long time of watching his stuff before I worked out that he was a medical doctor, and I can't help that he, even from that point, I think it's. I feel he was disingenuous, not 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 sort of purposely misleading, but even when he when it was always oh it's Do- Dr. Stephen Greer, and you think oh right physicist, biologist, you know it's microchemist or it, trauma guy all right okay um i feel that he's he uses the weight of being a doctor you know it's in the, yeah. but he he uses the weight of being a medical doctor in a scientific world and i find that odd so you think he should scrap the doctor if he's not, gonna not, do this? yeah not scrap i just don't i i don't know what being an er doctor has to do with researching ufos do you know what i mean it's not like um oh, michio kaku or something like that you know it's not it's not like one of those people using their background to talk to comment on something mm. you know it's uh, I mean, <laughs> unless he watches the um alien autopsy uh, <laughs> the video maybe he could give us a he could give us a medical background on that but uh, hey, you know what that would be good yeah. Great. If you're watching this now, and I know you watch my show many times, um, you sh- he should mm. do a a debunk, or if anything, you know, say you know this is a real body. I think it needs a rebunk, not a debunk. Yeah. <laughs> the, you know, uh, it could maybe he, yeah, he could use that. You know, his uh, his experience of being in theatre to mm. you know disproving some of these old autopsy cases i know? don't think 
there's did we i i know we messaged each other about um the the autopsy video but i don't i don't know whether we spoke about it much on the last one which uh, one the, which autopsy video the one the one yeah that you mean the one where they said they, they it's crash test not it's dummies shop dummies yeah and bits of pig and stuff like that yeah, yeah. and special effects um the oddly enough the the older that is and the more it goes on i i mean i only watched that oh maybe maybe a month ago after after we'd spoke about it you know i watched the, the whole bit of video again i mean it looks amazing yeah and it shouldn't because it was yeah. done in the early 2000s like was it like 2000 2001 yeah so this so people so there's a lot of people debunking that and saying yeah that it it's in, in fact it's come out that you know the guy said yeah it was it, yeah it was a hoax yeah but was it yeah is that the hoax you know yeah it, it looks i mean it looks amazing yeah it does not look like shop dummies even the and pigment of the, the skin. reason why i can tell you this as well is because i'm kind of i'm planning on doing something on the channel which it's going to be a hoax. Autopsy, aren't you? I'm gonna do, no, I'm going to do a hoax. Right. But I'm going to tell people it's a hoax. Okay. I'm thinking of making a recreation of an alien autopsy <laughs> because I'm very good with clay and just general creating shit. Yeah. And I reckon I could do something pretty good. And if I put enough, I need to work out how to make something look old. See, I can I can video edit, but to make it look genuine mm -hmm. is hard. So I would like to kind of try and recreate something at some point. The channel will have to grow a lot more for me to do that because it mean I'd have to take time out, and it'll be have to be when I get the studio sorted. But mm -hmm. I don't That's think a good idea. I like it. I don't think I could recreate that. No. Um... And I, I can I can I can draw and I can I can I can model very well. Yeah. I'm not blowing smoke up my own ass a little I'm a little bit. I can't read though, so I've got to do that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you, you need so, one superpower. It's, it's what happens towards it, dyslexic it's people. It's what dyslexic people that they, they, they they're good with their hands. Yeah. Um that's what I like my wife to say, but she just doesn't know. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, the to get a bit of and I've got a tiny bit of uh, clay here to get this and turn this into that. I know it wasn't clay; it was what silicon and yeah, and then animal uh, parts in it and yeah, it? all sorts of stuff. But the skin but, seems to diffuse, and that's what I I, I I've only. I've only noticed that since um, th this generation of gaming, where one of the big um, uh, one of the the big pushes forward was to make skin look more realistic, was that you can you can see that skin is is almost slightly translucent because you can see you can see what's through it and like the yeah. the, the various uh, I oh, fucking. I forgot what they're called now. The various like uh, what the, the is it the derma layers or whatever. Epider epidermis is the first one, isn't it? Is that, 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 I have no idea. It? Yeah, but you, you could. I don't even mean you can see the. If only Doctor Stephen Greer was here. If only he was, yeah. But you, you I don't even mean you can see the. You see the veins underneath. Yes. And yeah, see, yeah. See the bits. But where in that video, you can see it. You can see the. Um, like the discoloration in the skin of that thing. You, yeah. you can. It doesn't feel like it's a solid, like side of something. It, I, it's odd. It's so odd. And my debunk would not come down to what that thing looks like. Oh. My debunk would come down to how it's filmed. Yes, it's not yeah. enough. the The way it's filmed doesn't look professional. It doesn't look like if you know if I was if I if I had an alien in front of me. 
I'd be going in on that thing's fucking cock, its balls, its asshole, its nipples, you know, it, everything. And, and that's just for personal use. Bro, I'd be putting the camera in the cavities. You know, I'd be getting as far in there as I could just to, to, to show everybody, you know, what an alien actually looks like from the inside. Because um, it's right. what's inside that counts. It's just what's inside that counts. Um, I would caveat that by saying if you're... If if you right, let's just say that the whole like thought of that that piece of footage is right. Yeah, it was in Roswell, New Mexico. There there was a crash. There was bodies recovered from the crash. What it, it, it was whizzed onto the table. Let's see what's in Jeff. Um, I would. I don't know what. Um, Film, you know, it, it's not like an army base would have a film crew. Mm. So uh, there is uh, a high chance that Private Gordon had a camera shoved in his hand. Yeah, get so this film. Yeah, I know what you're saying. Now looking at this strange thing with not enough fingers and toes. Oh, Nurse but, Nancy. Yeah, um, he's been told to stay out of the way of the physicians because they're doing their job. I think it would be a rush job because you've got um, you've got something foreign there that you've you you've no idea what the biology of it's like. It's very hot for a sec for uh, for a start because it's been in the desert, so it's obviously going to be perishing. So time would be of the essence to get that thing somewhere and get stuff out of it to see what happens. That um, it's the it's the little details that get me, like the um, the black. Like they could peel those the black things off the eyes. Um, Does that happen if we peel? Can we peel stuff off our eyeballs? No, don't think so. Do I try? No, I'm not going to try and do that. <laughs> but um, but it, 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 didn't they say that the clock though was too new for the time it was filmed? I'm not sure. I'm mm-hmm. sure they said that the clock was um, not from the pan the pun, but not from the right time. I mean, I'm sure there's plenty of clocks. I mean, how do you? I don't. Maybe I'm not. I'm not sure. I haven't heard the clock thing. I know the apparently the phone was the right sort of era, but more <laughs> importantly, the film and the film, the film, the film was the right era. You know, it was the. Um... Speaking of film and autopsies, so do you? Um, you've seen the Skinny Bob, Skinny Bob, haven't you? Yes. There was there's a guy um, that has done a d de- a debunk on the skinny bob. We spoke about this last time. I think. Yeah, he's. I've done a video uh, uh, about him. Abomination. Yes. Yeah. And uh, I'm glad you remembered his name. <laughs> Sorry, Abomination, but I'm, I've had a beer. Uh, but yeah, he's he's a talented young man. I think he's a young man. Um, he sounds like a young man. And he, he he's done a recreation of the um, the gimbal um, UFO, uh, which done, he's done a fantastic job of that. But then he, he did a debunk of the um, skinny Bob, but he stumbled across a scene, and it and it is one scene in the first video that went out of skinny bob where it shows ufos it shows them walking about the the aliens it shows the actual skinny bob when it looks like he's being interviewed where he's got the the turtleneck on the mm-hmm. not a chance in hell that would fit over his head french uh, alien but there is velcro they got velcro from aliens yeah um but he said there's this one scene in this video and I'll, I'll put that up now for any of my viewers watching your viewers are going to have to use their imagination but I'll try and explain it very well um, with your, listen, words. your listeners <laughs> um, and it is this I think it's a literally it must be about five to six seconds and it is of this autopsy of the alien and it doesn't look exactly like skinny bob does Mm. it looks like skinny bob's being copied off it but not only that abomination said that he's put all the he's done all the tests with the filters this that and the other to try and 
see if this how when this was done and this particular piece looks like it's old and original so he his conclusion was that they've hidden within this um ivan i forgot the name of the channel ivan 035 or something like that i'll put it up now but that's the the original person that put the skinny bob video has not gained profitable not he's had nothing yeah he's had no monetary gain off this he's just put four videos out of this skinny bob and nobody knows why mm. but this one clip he said looks original it looks old and he has he, he, he he's pretty much 100 percent that this it was done back in the day it's old footage and he's not said that, that that means that it's an alien, but he, he has said that he thinks that was filmed back then. It would be an um, it would be a good way to get something out if you had something to hide it. Hide it within a hoax. Hi, but not and not even not even just a hoax, but to hide it within something which has clearly had a lot of money thrown at it as well. You know, because the the skinny bob thing, like you say, with the uh, where he stood there in the turtleneck. It's it's clearly like it's it clearly CGI. Anyone that doesn't think that's yeah, I think it's like, CGI. It's, it's yeah, well yeah, yeah. Done, don't get me for when it yeah, was, oh yeah, it's well done for for the average Joe blocks. Yeah. it's just it's sat pic, at home. It's Pixar level animation. The, the animation is stunning, um, and that that's what I mean. That's what makes me think. You know that that's had money thrown out at it to do that. Yeah, to start off with, I thought that was, you know, somebody's portfolio, like where they'd be taking that to a studio and going, I've put this out on YouTube, this is me. Yeah. You know, can I have the job? Um, but nothing's... It, normally, with things like that, like when you see these UFOs crashed in the forest and it's from a movie set, you see it t- It turns up after a bit. I'd be, I'd be interested to know that to do, uh, to render something like that, when it was done, what sort of graphics going you'd need in a computer? Well, you know, if you're... I struggle to edit now. Yeah, and I mean, I'm running a Mac. It's a state of the art. It was a state of the art Mac seven years ago. Yeah. So, and I I struggle to just do this interview that I'll be editing now. Mm. You know, it will. I'll. It, it will it will start to slow down through the editing pro because and because it, it's something like ninety something gig by the time I finished yeah, an interview. Yeah, yeah. It's believe it or not, no, yeah. uh, you know, video. That's what it is. Mm-hmm. And I don't even know how that works. When you think of, you can download a game that's like ninety gig, like fucking Halo or whatever, and just one video is the same sort of data as a fucking computer game. Yeah. And I have to compress my videos down. The last interview, I've just done an interview with a guy called Dark Hour Paranormal. And I've just compressed that video down. And it's compressed to 7 gig. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't even look what that was, but I, that must have been over 100 gig. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and then you think about that's, that's that when you're doing, what, like 1080p like video like, or, or, and two lots of 1080p video. Of, if you, you've got my side and your side, haven't you? Um, but think about how much data that is when you're like rendering 3D objects. Yeah, you know. it, it's it, it's insane the amount of data yeah. that would be. And you, you, I, I don't filters all them filters because if that's that's not just what that's many filters that's made that. Absolutely. I mean, I've got a Alienware um, laptop that I, I use for doing audio edit and stuff like that on it. And that's got a RTX 2060 in it. I, I don't know because I'm not, a, I'm not a visual effects artist, but I think you'd struggle on that, which has got like a, you know, what was a current gen graphics card until a few weeks. Yeah, ago. I mean, my PC, it's not, um, it's not the most up to date graphics card, but it's a GTX 970 in there. Yeah. That struggle with it. Yeah. Yeah. So it's that that's what gets me with that is how how someone had the money to do it, how someone had the money and the time to do it. Yeah. So people say when they say when they think, Oh, it's cost 
this this what well, the cost of the CGI. It's not just the CGI, but then it's the equipment as well to yeah. do that CGI in the first place. I mean, you're talking uh, uh, Skinny Bob was like early days YouTube, wasn't it? I think Skinny Bob is f- from 2005, 2006, something like that. <sighs> I'll tell you. I'll tell you exactly where it is. Keep talking, Lee. Keep talking. Yeah, I mean, even, even uploading stuff, though, then. I mean, I, I remember when I first started watching videos on YouTube, I had to wait for them to buffer. Like, I, if, if it would have been back then, I'd try to upload anything like that, a, a podcast or something. I'd still be uploading it now. All right, let's have a look. Skinny Bob is from... What? I've got the wrong video. Here we go. The original Skinny Bob video was... I'm feeling you're drunk at two Nine months. years ago. It's a long time. It's a long time Nine ago. Nine years ago. That's, that, is, that is early days. I mean, you're talking... How long have... Uh, the iPhone 12 is coming out, isn't it? How long has the iPhone been around for? Is that 11 years because they skipped one or something? Did 15 years. One? Yeah, something. There wasn't there something with when the iPhone. Yeah, they skipped the iPhone 9. Yeah, so, yeah. So, yeah, you, you probably. Sim, I think the Somewhere iPhone, around yeah, there, yeah. Before it. Yeah. Because um, people always look, look at these things. And it's. Okay, it's a, when did the first iPhone come out? The date of introduction of iPhone was the 29th of June 2007. There you go. Yeah. Thank you. I've got the tools. That's it. Google's now got to us. But um, but yeah, um, I mean, yeah, that's ridiculous to think that someone's just done that in their bedroom. And we, we have a tendency to do this where... It's it's the same as when you look back in your life when you're a child. You know, when you, you think back of memories of yourself when you were sort of five, ten, or something like that. You always do it, but put yourself as you are now, thinking about yourself when you were younger. Yeah, yeah, you do. And that's what happens when we see things like this, like the alien autopsy. We think, oh well, you know, you've got all this stuff now. It would have, you know, we've got all HD cameras. We've got um, even <clears throat> take out the physical equipment look at the um software advancements that have been made for things like this you know for video editing and stuff it's not like um your man doing skinny bob would have been using uh, the latest adobe suite yeah no, I mean, it's... no totally right I, right on the money there lee i mean the that thing nine years ago somebody put a lot of fucking love into that yeah, and to, for no credit. Speaking of special effects, have you heard about Tom Cruise? No. And Elon Musk. Oh. So apparently, um, the next film where Tom Cruise is going to be in space, he's going to be in space for real. Mm. <laughs> and I just think the conspiracy guys are just going to absolutely be all over that i i'm i'm a massive flip-flopper when it comes to musk i i, I know I, you are yeah <laughs> you, you, you you're disappointed about the mouse i am i'm still disappointed about the mouse but it's like it's sometimes i think he's the the savior of humanity and then the other times i think oh he's the guy that's going to destroy us all do you know i'll tell you what is weird like that he kind of is He's been for a long time now warning about AI, and now he's like, "Fuck it, we'll merge with it." Well, he said that all along, hasn't he? That the only way uh, humanity can survive the singularity is by like, integrating with it. But what if he's the seed? That Neuralink's crazy. The uh, it's. Uh, Would you put that thing in your head? It makes me feel. Wait, right now, no, absolutely not. But if um, I'm sure there was people out there that said, what, like carry a, a small computer around with me all the time where people can get in contact with me in like a myriad of ways. I'm sure there was people that would have said they would never carry a device like that. 
I mean, as a, if I was a single man, which I'm not, but um, if that thing came out in advertising, just get the neural link, you know, and get laid, uh, you know, five times a month by different women, mm-hmm. um, I'd be all over that. You know, I, I would. That that would be an incentive for me to get it. Of course. <laughs> or if, or if, if it was okay. So d- on a serious note, if it cured my dyslexia so that I could pick up a book and read it and understand. And I can read now, but mm-hmm. to pick up a book and actually take it all in and yes. understand yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, I get it. Yeah, I've, I've, I'm exactly That's a same. big seller for me, that. <coughs> I agree, that, yeah. That would, kind of, that would make me, maybe make me want to drill a hole in my head and put that little thing in. Very jealous of people that um, have the attention span to sit down and read books. Like, very jealous of Yeah, it. I am. Um, yeah, uh I'm also jealous about uh, guys that get laid all the time as well. <laughs> I'm a married man. This is true. <laughs> and I hope the missus is not watching this. <laughs> or listening. <laughs> the glass. Who's, who's that behind you with this with the frying pan? But, um, yeah. Uh, I think... Yeah. I, I'd like to say no, but I think probably in the end, yes. I think the... Um, it sounds like a, it sounds alien right now. You know, the whole thing sounds so crazy. It's, and it had a weird reveal as well. Did you see the reveal with them just having these pigs running around saying they've got Neuralinks in them? Like, you could tell me they're running around. I didn't pigs. see that. I wish I had. Yeah. Um, it's... But I mean, he kind of explains it very well because he, he kind of says, you know what, you, you already have um, a. Uh, how does he put it? You already have a synthetic or whatever. You have, you've got this. You yeah, know, yeah, yeah. You've got your mobile phone, and it is very much. It's kind of a part of you, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Uh, it's, uh, when he says it's, um, all, all you're doing is removing the bandwidth issue between, like, technology and yourself. The only issue I've got with it is, is if you could do the Matrix thing of, oh, I know Kung Fu now. Um, Would everybody be knocking the fuck out of each other? Everyone, everyone would be knocking the fuck out of each other. It just The whole whole world would just turn into a massive Kung Fu fight. Can you imagine that? You're in the pub and some guy just <laughs> eyeing up your missus and you're like, fucking right, teach me Kung Fu now. <laughs> <laughs> like, really quickly. Like, oh, I've not got Wi-Fi, shit. But, um... But the other the other issue I've got with that is, especially um, like being a musician, um, is where where does that stop? So does that mean um, I can I just download like a template of another drummer and now I can play like that guy, uh, or I can now like play guitar like somebody, so now I can write songs. But am I really writing songs? Because all I've done is downloaded the knowledge of somebody else. Um, does it destroy human creativity? Yeah, I, I couldn't agree more. That that so yeah, like I was saying before, the only thing that I've got going for me is uh, you know I'm 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 pretty I'm pretty good when it comes to creating stuff or drawing stuff, but if if the guy next to me that's the genius when it comes to science or whatever or you know, he, yeah, yeah. He, he's the big the big guy that can do all the shares and this, that and the other and invest his money great. But then he can draw as well. I'll be pretty pissed off. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, because he's got the money to afford the Neuralink. Yeah. But he can do everything. I he can do everything that I, I w- I'm naturally good at just from birth. But I, I've not got any of his in, his advantages that has made him a fortune. But now because he's made all that money. He can do what I can do. And the other months. the other thing there would be is how satisfying would it then be to do something like that? I've always wanted to be able to draw. I'm fucking awful at it. I'm, I'm a terrible artist. Um, and I'm, I'm the living embodiment of, you know, people say, oh, if you do something enough, you'll get better at it. Not at all. I'm as bad at like d- drawing and painting. As Some I was people make it make six. make a living drawing bad paintings. Oh yeah, I, I mean, even, even mine. Like sometimes you look at paintings that are bad paintings, and someone goes, "Yeah, but there's something to it." You go, "Yeah, look at mine. There's nothing to it. There's no, there's, no, there's no thought of texture and things like that." I'm just. I not. know what you told me that you drew that behind you. 
Well, shh. I'm trying to prove a point. But, um, but um, the uh, the thing is, if I let's say I was to say, like da- download art, right? so I got the art pack, I paid for the art Neuralink pack, now I can draw. So I draw this wonderful vista of a sunset. And I look at it and go, yeah, but it's not mine, is it? It's essentially the same as me just downloading a wallpaper for my laptop because it's not, I, I've put no effort into being able to do that. You know, it's even the, um, like I've, I've been throwing my like hat in to try and do a bit of stand up and I, I enjoy sitting down and trying to write jokes and bits and I, I enjoyed going out and trying to test them out on people. And when I got a laugh back, it's because not not just because I had something which I knew was going to be funny. I had something that I'd sat and it might have only been like a 30 second bit, but it probably took about five to 10 hours of moving words around, adding words, taking it, taking it, I go, no, that, that punchline's rubbish to get that 30 seconds, which I got a laugh back from. Is that the one that I watched, by the way? Yes, that's the first time I've ever done stand up. It was very good, mate. Thank you. I really enjoyed it. It's uh, I, I, unfortunately, I, the next one was supposed to be this month, and it was supposed to be on the third, uh, but they had to shift the date to the ninth. I've got plans for the ninth, so now I've got an extra, I've got an extra month to work on my stuff before I come out again. So you forward. came up with that. How long were we on for? About, really, about ten minutes. Or was that just the small seven, seven, seven minutes? So you came up with that in literally an evening? Kind of. Well, what, what I did was I had I had ideas for it, and then I um, I, I'd be because I I I'd signed up to do it, and then about two weeks before I was to do it, I really sort of knuckled down and started trying to write, and then I had a complete lack of confidence before I happened to it. Turned up to the venue early, and then rewrote the whole set. <laughs> What you re rewrote the whole set? Out yeah, there. yeah. Because I shouldn't have done. I should, it was a bad move, but uh, yeah, it's, I won't do that again either. But no, I, I enjoyed it. It was good fun. I, I I like. I love comedy. I've always loved comedy. Yeah, mate. I look forward to seeing you do some more stand up. You should do some more stand up on your channel. Get some practice runs. Uh, yeah, it's, it's weird. I mean, I can't even rehe- I can't practice in the house. Um, it's it's weird trying to do it like the the first time i ever I, I held a microphone and tried to tell a joke was when i took the microphone off the girl and started <laughs> you know right. the, even even the it was really funny like i, I told nobody for the, for people that don't know i, I come from the Isle of Man. it's only a small place it's got eighty thousand people on it um i told no friends i was going to do this i told one friend and she came to watch me and the only reason i told her is because i knew she was going anyway <laughs> but uh, yeah, it was. So you are you are like kind of like the the, the recluse comedian. I, it's okay. Now. I just I wanted to get the first one done out of the I way. Can't get that you you know you you if you've not done it before you 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 think you know what this is funny but there's a chance somebody else might not find it funny. So if it all goes to shit, I want to be the only one that witnesses it. <laughs> Yeah, 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 yeah. Pretty much, uh, or even just the thought of because I've never, I've never done anything which, um, even like two seconds before I started doing, it, I've always had this thing of like, oh, it might go wrong, but I've practiced and I know I can kind of do it, but it might still go wrong. But before stand up there, I thought, oh, I have no idea if I'm going to do this. I could, I could just start talking, and people just go look blank at me and go, ooh yikes i totally get that. i mean i used to back in the day a long time ago i used to dj for a living yeah and when my, whenever my friend used to turn up to the venue it was like i, I don't know why i just felt a bit weird yeah. like am i might should i pl- should i play to them or should i uh you know it, it was it became i did i become a little bit more showy offy or it, it, it was just weird so i can't i get it and at the same time, your friends can make you more nervous than people that you don't know. Mm. I I think it depends how comfortable and how confident you are in what you're doing. I um I play drums and um 
the more people that watch me play is the better I am because I've got complete confidence yeah. in my ability to do it. Um, like get other drummers in, get other musicians, get anybody, anybody you can want to. I'm quite happy to play drums in front of them. But like I say, it's because I've done it longer. Whereas the comedy thing, I didn't, I didn't know if I could do it or not. But here we are. But anyway, that's something to do with aliens. <laughs> it don't matter, mate. You know, we 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 delve, we delve we deep into dig. everything. Yeah. Just got, just um, got an, uh, yeah, we got, did. Got, we we did start to speak about Travis Wall, but we kind of went off Travis Wall. But yeah, yeah, the, we got we got so you so you believe Travis Wall because I, I watched an interview I the don't other know. day. You don't know, okay? Well, me, I'm a, I'm a bit neutral that. with him. Come back to that because yeah. I watched a very very early interview where Travis Walton is next to, and I've forgotten the guys, just like we always do. I've forgotten his name. Um, but the, Travis is talking about the interview, talk, sorry, talking about his abduction, and the guy who said, yeah, but Travis, you failed your first... Um, um, lie detector. Lie detector test. And he says, yeah, but I passed the second one. And he says, yeah, but the second one was, was performed by uh, an amateur. So it, it, it was a bit... And Travis looked a little bit like, as if to say, take, go take your face for a shit, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> How dare you? I know what, I know what happened. Um, I do believe Travis. I think something definitely happened. Because, and, and it's a funny one, this, because I spoke to um, a guy called David, who's in one of my um, interviews, he's completely blurred himself out. He spent... Uh, a day or so with Travis I, watch, I watched that yeah it was a good interview great guy and he believes Travis he said the guy's a bit of an arsehole he says and the, one of the reasons why he's probably a bit of an arsehole is because he keeps having to go to UFO conferences and to keep telling this fucking story over and over again and you can tell that to be he, fair he doesn't have to no I know he doesn't have to but that's kind of it's kind of all he's got going for it's him. a gig now yeah yeah, yeah. That's his, you know that's his thing I mean, can you imagine keeping a hoax up for that long? I mean, how much money? How much money is he actually made out of it? Yeah, even if it even if it wasn't a hoax, so to have to consist consistently relive that over and over and over again would would wear on your soul. I think. Yeah, I mean, he also says that you know the film Fire in the Sky was a was just bullshit. Yeah. So he's saying that the film that they made about him was bullshit you know he, for him to turn up turn around and say that that kind of that might put off other people wanting to do a film about him yes and that's the last thing he wants to do mm. but he, so do you know what i mean he's got that going for him in my book because he he he, he wanted to make more money off it there's always room for another film but then, on the other hand, there's always room for the, the real story of Travis Walton, mm. the film. See, it, I mean, what would you, what could it be? Would it be, who comes up with that idea? I think that's that's what gets me with, with hoax ideas. You never hear about, like, big stories that come out, like Travis Walton, yeah, that get debunked. Or like properly debunked, is in yeah. you know it's so it's it's not like there's a whole host of people out there pretending they're being abducted and getting loads of TV time over it. It always has there has to be substance to it somewhere for it to like ignite the imagination, if you will. Yeah, I think one of one of the most interesting things with that case for me is that all the people that over time not one of them has cracked yeah uh, and it's only one person that's gaining off this now if gaining at all and that's travis mm. it's obviously gaining a little bit out of it but the others nothing yeah and between friends that with success you know and i've seen friends do this whether it's in whatever career it is, they get jealous. Mm. And you would think if it was a hoax, one of them would say, one of them, 
out of what I think it's seven of them, I think, but it's probably not, um, would get a little bit pissed off and like go, enough's enough, this is bullshit. It's time to take this story down. Or what what if I think if it had been an orchestrated story out of the all all of the people that essentially had nothing to do with the with the action side of it, um like a year or two in, or you, you'd have had someone say, "Oh yeah, but uh, like I, I remember when I was waiting for Travis, I, 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 I remember him see being in a ship, and I saw lights out my bedroom window, and you know, it's, somebody would have interjected themselves into the action if it was made up. Yeah, because it's, it's something you wouldn't, you, you'd be jealous that I say if somebody else got the lead. Do you know what I mean? In your little eight-man play. Somebody else got the lead role, and you, you're a bit part. And I think at least one of them would have wanted to make their part more exciting. It's just human nature. But on the flip side of it, and you've got to think about this in other cases of people going missing, what would have happened to those men if Travis had never come back? Um, I don't know. They'd have probably been sent down for murder, wouldn't they? Were they, were they fingered for... <laughs> whoops. Were they uh, pointed for it's murder? <laughs> <laughs> um, were, did they have the finger pointed at them for murder, did they? Or for, like, what have, what have you done with Travis? I, th- well, I think it was going that way, you yeah. know, where, you know... Yeah, you think about it, even now these days, you know, a group of guys go into a police station or whatever, meet the local sheriff and say... We've uh, we've been in the forest with his mate, and there was a massive, big glowing object, and it's uh, shot him with a beam, you yeah. know, and we think he's dead. What what's what's the uh, what's he gonna think? Well, the fir- the first thing they're gonna think is that because they were they, were they hunting. Were they hunting? No, they yeah. were chopping down. Uh, they, they were chopping trees down. Down. They were timber guys. What they call yeah. them? Lumberjacks. So, so the lumberjacks. So the first thing you'd have thought was would have been that something had gone wrong. One of them had got killed, and they'd come back with a ridiculous story, isn't it? That that's the first thing that would come to mind. Um, I don't know. It's uh, the, on the other hand, I can't help feel. But then I think this is a strange thing with abductions um because I, I i there's too many of them for it to be nothing like it, there's too many of it for just to be crazy people but on the same um same side i don't believe it's something that happens physically to people yeah and that's what gets me with the walton thing because that is an actual physical occurrence of spaceship shoots a beam at a lad takes him for a while and then put him back. And if that was the case, and if the if if the little black eyed lads were running around jacking people for a couple of days or a couple of hours and putting them back, we would see more of it. You know, people claim to be abducted in cities, in towns. Um, th- there would be evidence of it if it was a physical occurrence. Yeah, I mean, I've I've uh, interviewed recently two abduction cases possible abduction cases they get they're both of them have a lot of memory loss yeah uh, but quite fascinating videos as well um where uh both of them didn't actually want to come on i had to ask beg them to come on they yeah. just it was just like random guys wanting to tell me the story just because they they know i'm in i'm into this subject because it's what i do um, yeah. but yeah that were quite cool that they did come on and when they came on there was no sign of kind of like silliness or trying to make things sound over exaggerated I mean one guy just literally told me he saw a plane stood still in the sky that's all he saw lots have of people seen... notice that don't they yeah have that, you ever seen a UFO thing. no I've never seen a UFO yeah. but the friend that he spoke to I think it was 10 15 years later when he said, do you remember the time we both saw that plane still in the sky? Don't you think that was weird? He's like, no. And he's like, you know, the plane that we both saw, we were waiting 
for to go into uh, band practice. The, the, there was a plane over his head. And it just stood still. It was in mid motion. He says no, but I remember when we saw the two UFOs and it shot off within seconds. So his mate saw a UFO. Have I, had I told you on the podcast what, uh, when I, when I saw a UFO? I know we talked about it after, but I don't know if I, if I, made I told them, but you. I'll, we'll definitely have it again. Yeah, the the it was only because it's going to be on Alien Addicts as well as your channel. Yeah, it was only it was only because it was on the um, uh, on the way back from band practice, and uh, the the driver that was dri- driving, so I was in the passenger seat. He saw it as well, but not as well as I did because he was driving, and it was it came from behind us. Uh, shooting across the sky and it was a green um a, like a green fireball one of the um you know there's, there's lots of pictures of them now because i i'd never seen anything like it before it was only when i went home and went on the internet i started seeing pictures that people had taken of these things where it was like i mean oh, iridium satellites can have a green tinge to them but i mean how how close was it it was it felt like how big was it Oh right, okay, that's not a satellite. So, yeah, no, it was say tennis ball size, sort of just smaller than tennis ball size in the sky. Yeah, right. it, it was a sizable object, and um, it had it was like a white, a white center, and then it f- effervesced sort of green, and then it, ha- it had a, tra- a tail off the back of it, and as I would say. Because uh, it was just before, as I was coming up, uh, as we were coming up the road, uh, I live on a hill. How long ago? Uh, oh, 15 years ago. Oh, so not a drone either. No, 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 it wasn't a drone. But there's a there's a, there's there's a really good end to this story, um, because I'd say, and I reckon because I saw it from the corner of the eye, and I'd say that if it was started there, it would be like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, gone sort of thing off into the distance it was a great incredible speed like it was going to cover the distance it covered um but i remember so i went home i started googling like green fireballs because like, that's fucking crazy um saw lots of pictures of things that looked very similar to what i'd seen so at the time i was working with a friend of mine paul he's he's one of my best friends and i got to work work the next day to where he completely pissed all over my chips because it's like Paul, you like you're never gonna guess what I saw last night. He said it wasn't a massive green fireball in the sky, was it? And he lived about three miles down the road from me, and he was out having a cigarette in his garden, and he seen it at the same time I did. Oh man, a different angle. And it's it. Like, I've I've often said that to my friend before that if he hadn't have seen it, I'd have ended up doubting already. Yeah, you know, I'd have had it down as a shooting star or something like that. But we, we talk about it quite often, and it's it's kept it fresh because, you know, because we there was somebody else that saw it. And this was a sighting about fifteen years ago on the Isle of Man. Yes. How big's the Isle of Man? Uh, oh, is it fifteen by five miles or that? Twenty five right. something. Like that. I I don't know. So dimensions. you know everybody. Uh, reasonably, yeah, reasonably. There's I I know a lot of people. <laughs> uh, but there was a big sighting on the Isle of Man that I didn't see actually, where there was a like a mass sighting um, out on Douglas Bay, where there was like a UFO just hovering over the sea. That was that, that was in my lifetime. I, but, but I know people that saw that, but I didn't see it. Uh, the Isle of Man intrigues me because I always hear about little weird stuff that's going on on the island. Mm. Not necessarily involving David Icke, but just weird stuff. Largest, I, I, I believe the the for more the most Masonic lodges for per person for anywhere in the world. I think. Really, I think so. So you think this, the Isle of Man is heavily, um, you know, with a. <laughs> Ike, yeah, Ike reckoned it was, wouldn't he? He said there was something to do with like ley lines and stuff like that on it. He, he had something about the Isle of Man. You've seen that? Um, I've seen. I think I've sent you some links recently. Who's been speaking about David Ike? Um, ex 
ex E seventeen singer. Um, oh yeah, um, is it is it Lee? Is he Lee as well? No, it's um, Brian Harvey. Brian Harvey, yeah, yeah. I used to like a bit E seventeen. All right, all right. It's really all right. It's fine. Sorry, right. don't worry about it. Just don't don't say anything. We can edit this out. I'll edit yeah. it out. No one best Christmas know. song. Stay another day. Ooh, best Christmas song. No, I'm not uh, asking you best Christmas song. I'm saying they did one of the best Christmas songs. All oh, right, that Christmas song. Well, it's not, but. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, it, he's he's recently been. I mean, I can't make head of tail of it if I'm honest with you. What he's trying to say, um, but he's he's looks like he's throwing some accusations David Icke's way. Oh, is this something to do with you? Yeah, you sent me the links about um, him being him being very much like a, of an Epstein nature. Well, that's what's, I'm not going to say anything on here because I've got no evidence to, to back anything. Yeah, up. It's yeah, yeah. There's been a lot of, um, like, things thrown. I mean, I mean, David Icke's always speaking against that type of stuff as well, isn't he? I don't... Do you know what? I think... Uh, I'm, I'm sure you, um, in the field you're in, I'm sure lots of your listeners are big David Icke fans. I, uh, I don't dislike him. I don't. I don't. I, don't. I, I, I like the guy. I think he's, yeah. he's kind of like he's, I don't believe he's a funny him. little uncle. Yeah, I don't believe him, but I don't. Oh, sorry. I should say I don't totally believe him. Um, I don't think you know, you don't, he's got a bad bone in his body. I, I, I think I, maybe I, he's a little bit. He's, he's a bit fucked up in the head, but he doesn't. He's, he's not got any evilness in him. I do question some of the like, anti-Semitism. I think that's a bit far in points. But um, I don't, I don't think he's one of them. Like you know, have you ever bumped into him in Tesco's? It's Wrong Island, mate. Oh, is it? Yeah, he's oh, he's the he's the Isle of Wight. Oddly enough, did I not say this like, last time we were on the we we were oh, on? Your Isle of Man, he's Isle of Wight. Yeah, but one of one of my I listeners get mixed up. Yeah, one one of my listeners, he lives on the Isle of Wight, and uh, his dad is in like a car park battle with David Icke. Where because they go to the same supermarket. <laughs> oh man, that. It's fucking my spot. Yeah, it's, oh, fucking Ike's ad again. <laughs> yeah, I mean he speaks, but he doesn't really speak. About, I mean, we spoke about the comedian that um, asked him about the reptilians, and he kind of like he he didn't want anything to do with that he was like i'm not talking about the reptilians in yeah. this interview he's not really doing that these days he's not t- speaking that much about the reptilians but he's definitely speaking about the world being very fucked up um yeah. which is fair it's as soon as like... you bring the world reptilian into it though it's kind of like really yeah i mean i i i, I don't know the I kind of wish that he, for, for an auth- authenticity thing, I wish he just stuck to his guns on it. You know, it but it yeah. seems now the, I'm not, I, I I think it's odd that he's got himself mixed up with your Brian Rose guy, you know, the, the man from that London Reel. Yes, I know what you mean. Yeah, because um, I think he is a bell end. And, I don't know him uh, enough to call him that, but I call most people a bell end, so yeah, yeah, I'll agree so. with you. He, he just, he seems like a snake oil salesman to 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 me. Mm. You know, it's it, it which is a real shame actually because like the London Real platform he's got is a great platform. There's no reason why he couldn't be a British based Joe Rogan. You know, the, but it doesn't seem enough for him. I think his uh the like the reason, for instance, the reason Rogan's really good at what he does and who he interviews and that is because he puts his ego away and allows other people to speak where. Brian Rose doesn't seem to be able to get over his own ego. It's when he, like, if, for instance, even the, the, the interviews he did with David Icke, people noticed that it was always advertised as Rose Icke. And you think, well, you're the interviewer. You know, it's, if, you're, if you're interviewing someone, you would put your interviewer first, especially when it's David Icke, who is much more famous than you are. So it's, it, I, I, he can't he can't get over himself, and that's why I don't really trust his uh, his takes on what's going on at the minute. 
Yeah, I mean, David, David, I've seen recently David's got his son working with him. Yes, yeah, yeah, both of them, I think. I think there's one of them which does, uh, he like he does a lot of talking, like I, Ike does, and then his other son, I believe, is like the tour manager. Right. I think so. Family business. Family business, indeed. Indeed. Well, you know, if it works, if it if it works, it works. Mm. Even he must have made millions. You know, it's like when you look at the books that he sold. Well, apparently not. Us, apparently not. not. He, he, you know, he takes great pride in showing you his normal everyday car and taking you to his normal everyday apartment. Mm. You know, he's he's shown that a few times. This is my, where I live. This is my car. Yeah, yeah. Then what? Like, but where's all that money going? <laughs> Maybe he's giving it to his kids. Maybe he's giving it to his kids. Well, late, I, you know, on my channel, we generally go for about an hour and a half. It's been an hour and quarter. I know we're on yeah. your podcast as well. Yeah. Uh, but um, we, this is not the end of our uh, podcasts. This no, is gonna absolutely be a, I think not. this is going to be an ongoing love. I, th- I think it's an ongoing love. I yeah. absolutely, I'm, I'm, I'm here for the long there's, haul. There's a, there's a bromance here. I'm not, I, I'm not the type of guy that just hits and leaves. No. <laughs> so, so we'll get each other back on. And I think it's going to be a mutual thing. So, so, so for, for, for my guys, let can you just let them know where they can find you? Uh, you can look for me on any podcast app for Musi Audio. Uh, also, if you're on YouTube, if you look for Musi Audio on YouTube. All of the shows are uploaded um, in audio form with like a static image. Um, some special ones have got video, you know, but the it's it's a lot of effort editing like a two hour podcast without a, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> without a man to do it for you. So yeah, that that's what I I'd love to do. I'd I'd love to be in the position to do this podcast like a Rogan setup with a multi camera. Yeah. Like, well lit thing but it's not happening until somebody or somebody gives me loads of money or lots of people give me a bit of money <laughs> mate I'm, sh- I'm i'm sure i mean especially with the platform you're on it being spotify and now that joe rogan's gone to spotify it's just going to grow even more so you never know so. mate. yeah even amazon amazon are doing podcasts now you can get my on on uh, amazon music and audible thing you know what i haven't actually listened to a podcast on amazon yet but yeah i know it's there uh for musty audio listeners mate where are you i'm on youtube alien addict or some people call me um alien alien addict um (laughs) it is alien addict um and yeah i uh i don't really know what i do i just kind of delve deep into the paranormal and it is the paranormal now as well not just ufos because i definitely think there's uh, a mixture of the two that are somehow connected Rubbing so yeah together. i like to in- i like to interview people just mm-hmm. like this um and uh, yeah i'm trying to build up a, pl- a bit of a, a portfolio of people so then at some point it can be a case of well you know what this story and this story and this story they all match yeah these people have never met each other let's get them on together i like your channel because there's a level there's a levelness about it that i think lots of channels miss thank you mate yeah yeah that, that's what i like about it i like your podcast mate because you have a great voice for it thank you i think my voice is horrible i think most manx people have got terrible voices but no I, I, i've got a, i don't i i can't i i think this is what makes us good mate because i can't stand listening to me back and sometimes i'm like i can't understand a word i'm saying my mother says used to say to me you know i, I taught you better than that i said but yeah but mum, you, you moved to yorkshire <laughs> <laughs> so my mum my mum speaks the queen's english but when when i was very young she moved to yorkshire so i i, I hung around with everybody from yorkshire yeah. so, I'm on it. so i'm yorkshire now <laughs> but yeah thank you for coming on mate and thank uh, you for having me and thank you for having me as well um it's a bit weird this it is it's got a bit broke back again hasn't it it's got a bit <laughs> <laughs> Oh, at least, um, at least yes. you know what to call the podcast. 
I know made a broke up uh, reference then, but uh, I won't. Um, yes, good night, God bless, folks. Mind the bugs don't bite. I am Alien Addict, and this is Must See Audio. Thanks, guys. See you later. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.